How are you doing guys? Welcome to your uh, Dine at Home uh, cook along video for this week, which is week, is it three, I think three maybe of, uh, of April. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has purchased a box this weekend. Uh, your support as it always is, is absolutely incredible. And I appreciate every single one of you, uh, especially at this time when restaurants and, and pubs are opening for, for outside use, uh, you are still supporting us by eating the Dine at Home offices in your home. So thank you, thank you so, so much and that your continue is very much very very much needed and appreciated as always so on with your cook along video uh, for this week we'll go straight into the bread and into the starter as well uh, so our bread is a beautiful uh, multi-seed granary loaf it doesn't prove as big uh, as the as the white uh, flour uh, because it is a lot more denser so the proving uh, the proof of it is a lot slower and equally not as high but the taste is absolutely delicious and it's doubled nearly triple in size anyway, so it'd be absolutely delicious. Treat it exactly the same, into the oven, 180 degrees for five minutes, so that goes nice and crispy, and obviously you serve that with your beautiful Marmite butter. But please make sure that you don't eat that before your starter. This is very much needed for your starter, which is uh, a delicious uh, smoked, home smoked mackerel uh, pate, or parfait, but pate, uh, which is uh, have got a little bit of seasoned with a little bit of horseradish, uh, lime juice, and also some cream cheese. On top of that is a beautiful cucumber and dill jelly, and I promise you, it is literally juiced cucumber and dill. That's it. The colour is, is astonishing. The flavour is delicious as well, gently seasoned, and we actually set it with uh, a product called agar, which is a seaweed uh, extract. Uh, so it's completely vegan, uh, but also uh, the, the texture is a little bit firmer than what you would essentially have a set with uh, gelatin. Uh, so you might notice that, but make sure you get a bit of that on every single uh, bit of your uh, bit of your spoon or fork, whatever you decide to use uh, to eat it with. Beautiful horseradish cream, uh, which is a cream, um, which is a creme uh, fresh, uh, obviously fresh horseradish, bounded through uh, with some creme fresh, and look nice, nice, lightly seasoned. Uh, pickled cucumber, so we've de-seeded and de-skinned those, and they're just in a nice little sort of amara, uh, amar aromatic uh, dill pickle. Uh, in there, so we just used uh, some fennel seeds and dill uh, dill seeds as well. And we've also put a little addition of some red chicory in there as well, just to sort of uh, accompaniment the salad uh, element of your starter. For the vegetarians, we also have a beautiful whipped smoked goat's cheese. Only really lightly smoked this, but I mean, as soon as you open it, you'll sort of, yeah, straight away you get a nice smoky sort of flavour. Uh, we've seasoned that with a little bit of cayenne pepper. It's not spicy at all, it just adds a nice little back note. And the cucumber jelly, instead of putting it on top like we have the mackerel, it will stain the goat's cheese. Uh, you've probably you've potentially had a, like a beetroot jelly before with goat's cheese and it goes really pink. Uh, so this one would obviously go really green, which I didn't think was a very nice idea. So we just sort of, with a fork, I just mashed up the jelly and I'll pop that into a little uh, container as well. So you can serve that as an accompaniment on the side because uh, that goes really, really well with the goat's cheese as well. So guys, it is so, so self-explanatory, isn't it, with the starter, you know what I mean? It's so, so simple. I would, this is one each. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very healthy portion. We had six kilo of fresh mackerel coming off M&J Seafoods from, from Birmingham. Uh, so we thought we were gonna use it all. So we really have utilized that in its entirety. Uh, so you have got a really healthy portion. That will quite easily last till Monday, Tuesday, next week. So if you do, obviously don't eat it all, you wanna keep some or you wanna keep it for, for the next day for a bit of, on a bit of toast or anything, it'll be absolutely fine. So please don't worry about that. We've brined it, we've smoked it, we've cured it, we've done everything. So yeah, the longevity of that is definitely, I can hand on heart, Monday is absolutely fine. So uh, we'll progress with the, with the putting it together. I've decided, I've opted for a bit of a, a bit of a sort of, um, not, 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 not to plate this dish base, I think what the word I'm looking for, but I'm putting everything in small pots basically. Uh, so it's all separate, so we're not really, so we're all pick, like a picky sort of, picky sort of starter. So with your cucumber, uh, we'll pop that into your mixing bowl. Uh, that is two portions there. And then with your chicory, this is one portion. A lot of you have got bigger leaves, this is just a small, a section of small leaves. Again, guys, you can do do as you please with that. We have obviously cut the roots off, but like any leaf, the moment you obviously cut into the root, uh, it will go. It will start to discolor very slightly. So just chop the roots off there, and then with this, again, the spine is is, is all edible. It's not like a gem lettuce when it's super super firm. I'll cut that into strips, and again with the smaller pieces, I'll cut that into probably three, just like that. Beautiful, and a little bit of seasoning. And then I always use more than sea salt. Nice extra virgin olive oil, good quality as well. It's a, a Spanish single estate extra virgin. And then with that, just very gently, you've got the pickled juice in there from the cucumber, so that will just accompany accompany the, uh, or, or gently season the leaves anyway, that nice bit of acidity, just like that. 
super, super, super simple. And then with your, with your lead, just pop that ball in there. I always opt to sort of cut the chicory like this because it, it really, really adds height. Especially to if you've got like a nice sort of ramekin or a nice little salad sort of bowl, like a server like that, it looks absolutely stunning. So there's my salad. Horse radish creme fresh. Same spoon, it's quite thick. Use a really good quality French creme fraiche. So it's super, super thick. That is nice with horse radish as well, guys, in there. So you will seriously taste the horse radish. Not too, not, too, not too spicy, just a little nice flavour. That's that. I move the goat's cheese and the cucumber jelly out of the way. There's your potted mackerel. Pato with a beautiful jelly on top. And then again, serve that with the bread on the side. Tuck into that, spread it on your bread with your horseradish creme fresh and your beautiful salad as well to accompany it. That is a really nice, delicious, fresh, clean starter to your weekend that will fit perfectly in with how the weather's looking. It looks beautiful outside, but you need something nice and sort of warming to, uh, to have with a nice little sort of light salad on the side. Guys, enjoy your smoked mackerel pate and join me for the main course of chicken after that. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed the starter. Uh, me and Mikey have just absolutely demolished that one. Normally the girls get to get a little try, but that was one of the first um, sort of starters we've, we've literally, I absolutely loved it. Um, I've actually sliced the bread so hard and then sliced it width ways. So we got four slices out of each and it was just perfect to make for that. So I hope you enjoyed it guys and you probably went for it. If you have a look on my Instagram, uh, I'll do a picture of like literally the cucumber and everything on there. It looks awesome. So I definitely recommend it in that way. But uh, well, on to the main course guys. So uh, very similar, this one uh, to the vegetarian option as well. So just like the starter, we'll be going through it together. Uh, we've also got a little addition again, a bit like the chicory. We basically had uh, some white asparagus uh, given to us uh, from uh, from Wellex. We had a little bit over, and they said, "Can you use it on Wednesday?" So literally a couple of days ago, uh, saying, "Can you use it? If you can, please just take it off us." Absolutely stunning. I think a place had ordered it, uh, and then Wellex had ordered too much, so we got we we, we were the benefiters of that. So we put some grilled asparagus in there. White asparagus is absolutely delicious. So that's for both as well, for vegetarian and the meat option. So guys, you will have a beautiful poached. Uh, breast of chicken. Uh, we don't do the skin on anymore because this cooks up so much nicer without it. And equally, once it is poached, it's really hard to do, actually distinguish what's the the, the, the the sort of skin side or not. So we take the skin off and we make that into a crumble, which is obviously accompanying your uh, your your box this weekend. Beautiful bit, a little bit of thyme, beautiful piece of uh, garlic in there as well, and we just put that into some uh, some vegetable oil. That's it. Super simple and steam that. You also have some pak choi, which is just in here. There's just two portions in here, so it's actually just one and a half portions in there. So you'll, you'll not, the majority of you have, will have two pieces of pak choy each and they're absolutely stonking. If you've got a small one, um, pak choy that is, uh, we will, um, you've probably got three in each of them, but that's that's all in there. You also have the delicious French asparagus, so one nice thick stem. Uh, some of you may have two smaller ones. Your beautiful chicken sauce, which is super, super rich. So please, please, please don't reduce that. Just heat it up just until it starts to melt and, and it's got nice and hot, that's it. Please don't boil and reduce it. It'll get too sticky and it'll get way too strong. A beautiful comfy potato terrine. We use Kaufman's potatoes for that and it is absolutely stonking. Uh, some beautiful hen of the wood mushrooms, which are also called maitake mushrooms that we've grilled as soon as you open it. it smells like sort of like beery uh super smoky because it's been charred as well you get that sort of bitter element to it as well and we've uh, we've doused those in teriyaki uh, sauce that we've obviously made ourselves as well then you get a beautiful chicken and tarragon crumble which again is super strong so please go gentle on that and delicious mushroom ketchup which we've um which the acidity comes from some sherry vinegar this dish is this is like this is a restaurant dish. There's no two ways about it. This I'm sure I did something so similar to this uh, when I was at Adams. There's no two ways about it. Super super rich, super delicious, super tasty, and even better, super easy for you to reheat. The vegetarian is everything on that plate, other than the chicken skin crumble and obviously the chicken itself. But we have swapped that out for a delicious phyllo parcel. Just please be careful, guys, because some of the parcels on the bottom have gone a little bit sort of soggy, obviously, with cooking, and they've started to split. Nothing to worry about at all. Just please make sure you put some parchment paper. 
underneath or alternatively I would literally reheat it in here pop it in five or ten five to ten minutes till it's nice and hot spoon it out it'll crisp on top again it'll be absolutely delicious so that's for your vegetarian and then you've got a real large pot of uh, sep sauce as well that's super thick so I'd recommend eating that in the microwave but alternatively you can heat it on the stove but again please don't reduce it because it'll get too strong so without further ado let's head over to the stove these two are going to be sort of stir fried style i'm going to use one pan and i'm going to transfer the chicken and the potato to that to a tray to one of these trays um to go the other but i'm going to retain that non-stick frying pan to start to stir fry my pak choy and my mushrooms for later okay what i'll do is once i fry off the chicken and the potato to eat, we'll go straight on to roasting stir frying the pak choy and mushrooms so you know but don't do that at home you need to obviously allow the chicken a good five to six minutes to reheat before you start to cook those elements but for the video i just want to show you okay so uh, very carefully cut across your uh, your bag okay and you'll have quite a bit of oil in there and you'll smell the garlic and thyme straight away let's take all that out okay you'll have quite a bit of this because it's obviously steamed a lot of the moisture comes out of the chicken so please be careful with that also We'll take a couple of trays over, pop those in there. So you just retain your, your thyme, and if there's any garlic in there, which there certainly should be, retain that as well. Okay, and we'll go over to here. We'll leave the asparagus over as well. Okay, so my pan has been on a low heat, so that heat there, for about, well, since I've been talking, so for about three to four minutes, okay? I'm going to use some fresh oil in there and what you'll see will be an inside and an outside of the chicken breast you'll always see the cleaner side is always the outside so that's where i've taken the skin off the inside you'll see you might normally see a little sort of a darker color that's because of the knuckle so it's the attachment socket that's obviously we've taken the knuckle out and that's from there so essentially you want to just sort of very gently color that that sort of that sort of softer side or the uh, more, more presentable side that's on there Again, this has been confit in oil. So essentially, there's, I know it's nice and pressed now, but there's oil all in between that. Plenty of oil in there. So we don't want to go too heavy with, with, with obviously, with the oil that we put in the pan because that's going to be more oil at the end of, 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 of sort of colouring it. So all we want to do, it will colour quite quickly simply because the protein's been cooked out of it. So the sugars, the natural sugars are on the outside now. So it'll colour quite quickly. So the confit in will start to colour as well. It won't go massively golden. It needs that high heat of the of the oven to sort of do that golden sort of colour. But we'll get we'll get we'll get there and there about there for sure. As soon as we start putting the butter in there as well, that will start to colour up really nicely. I'm just going to grab a spoon. So we've got our thyme and garlic there. This is our tray, the fresh tray is for the uh, it's for the it's for the cooked chicken or the or the, or the, uh, the the roasted chicken. So I'll turn that on its side. Like I said, we just want to get a nice little bit of colour in there. A nice general general heat, nothing too high. So like a nice medium to high heat is absolutely perfect. If you've got a good pan, the residual heat should sort of hold on to that sort of uh, heat anyway. Um, so it will cut up a lot more quicker and easier. Anyway, so. Right, well, I'll flip that over. So as you can see, that green started to colour really nice on that side. I, if I was you, I'd take that a little bit, a little bit darker if I was you. Uh, but for the, for the element of the video, we just want to sort of power through it a little bit more. There's your chicken, so your chicken's nicely coloured that side, and equally nicely coloured that side. I'll put it back onto the presentation side, and then I'll put a couple of knobs of butter in. This will get the colour going nicely as well. And then we'll just put the thyme and the garlic in there as well. Now, the fragrance of the aromatics will start to smell extract straight away, which is delicious. Obviously, your chicken will start to get nice and coloured as well because the, the, the nuttiness of the butter will start to brown. And again, exactly the same with your potato tree, and that will start to colour also a beautiful golden brown colour. I believe that as it is. Look over one last time, you can start to see that that chicken's beautifully coloured. Just till that slightly, and just pop a little bit of butter on the top. Beautiful. Nice. The chicken breast on the tray. I would 100% recommend using um, using some greaseproof paper for this. These trays aren't too bad, so I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. But I would 100% recommend using a greaseproof tray or some greaseproof paper. So that's on there. 
We'll transfer that into the oven now. 180, and I'll take between eight to 10 minutes, okay? It's already cooked, the whole chicken's completely cooked, and obviously the potatoes as well, we just want to make sure we reheat that nicely. So I'm going to put this spot on for eight minutes in the professional oven. After four minutes of that, I will then start to cook the pak choy and also the uh, mushrooms. After the four minutes as well, I'll just pop on the same tray, I'll just pop my asparagus straight in on the same tray. Doesn't need anything, It'll, the butter and the, and the fat on there will be good with plenty, doesn't need any, anything else. Just pop the asparagus on there just to heat through. With the retaining of this butter and the garlic and the thyme, we're gonna discard that, but we're gonna keep the pan because essentially where it's been roasting, all those roasting sort of sediment is still in the pan, okay? So I'm gonna discard this safely in the sink. And I'm going to come back and show you. That's all that. I'm going to come back and show you how to pan fry your uh, your pak choy. If your pak choy, it's turning. If your pak choy is this size, you'll see the whole stone. If your pak choy is this size, I would 100% recommend chopping it. So I put it right in half. And don't worry, these stems are going to are going to are going to relax straight away. They're going to start to start to soften straight away. Okay. But if they're that sort of size, leave them whole, okay? Leave them absolutely whole, just up off the end there. Okay, perfect. Asparagus will be going on the train in about four minutes. These teriyaki hen of the wood mushrooms are already cooked. So as I said, I'm gonna show you how to reheat them. And they're already cooked, so they're gonna be thrown in at the very end, okay? So a little bit of oil is still in the pan, but we're gonna to add to it. Just like that. And then we're gonna to start to pan fry these. And this will literally taste like 30 to 60 seconds, you'll see the green starting to come out beautifully. As it's important, you at home don't do these this soon. I know I've said this time and time again, but I just don't want a phone call or an email on Sunday morning saying my factory was stone cold and it was overcooked because I put it in after the chicken like you said. I didn't say that. Please don't do it. I didn't say that. I said do this way after. But for the nature of this video, I want to show you early doors. Okay. So, as you can see, the, left, all the actual leaf of it is starting to caramelise quite nicely, and that you can see the, the water starting to come out, the moisture starting to come out, which means it is softening. I'm just going to flip those over. It smells absolutely delicious as well. You do want you do want it to sort of retain its texture in the root. That is important. You do want a bit of texture. You don't want it to be completely soft. You do want it to retain a bit of texture. So flip those over that side. Perfect. Two minutes have gone, so the two minutes have gone in the oven. So I'm going to put my asparagus in there in another two minutes. So just like that, they're starting to soften. Beautiful. In with your mushrooms. Okay, a little teriyaki will start to sort of go in there as well, which is delicious. And then as always, just a little knob of butter, just to finish all that off. I'll knock the pan off now as well. Just separate those mushrooms slightly. Beautiful, so heat free. There we are. Clean spoon. Sorry that. So as you can see, the mitaka mushrooms are in there, the fat choy is in there, the butter's melted, and to give it a nice little toss. There we are, the, the heat's off, the residual heat of that pan will help warm all the rest of that through, just like that, and that's it. That is that simple, that is that simple. So that's completely done. So that's how long it took. It literally took about two minutes. Okay, my asparagus is going to go in the oven. Okay, it's a tray out. All that, all that butter starting to come off there. Asparagus in the centre. That back in. For around four minutes. So I'll see you in four minutes. Are we going to plate all this together? All I'm going to do is just heat my shiitake ketchup in the microwave and my sauce in a pan. That is it. So see you in four. Okay, guys. So my timer's just gone off in the oven. So I'll turn the oven off. Try it out. Okay, there we are. So you can see, potato beautifully caramelised. It will obviously go naturally a little bit softer. Asparagus are beautifully roasted, and then obviously the what chicken is beautifully roasted as well. It's all come up absolutely perfectly as we've gone through. Yours will be freshly stir fried, unlike mine, because you've just finished that, wouldn't you? Yeah. And then. Shiitake ketchup that we've just reheated. Obviously, the lid literally lasts seconds, but the, 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 fortunately, the container is it's a lot more hardy and stirred, so that will that will stay as it is. And then the crumb is at room temperature as well. So it's all ready to go. I'd recommend resting your chicken for a couple of minutes, just so it just relaxes a little bit. 
but again for the for the video we're going to just go straight into it because i'm actually really hungry and this main course is right on my street so i'm going to go straight into it the sauce is on it's actually melted completely i haven't over i haven't even boiled it it's heated it beautifully and this sauce consistency is perfect so if you do over reduce it just pop a little bit of water in and that is absolutely fine it won't dull in the flavor because you've already intensified it overly intensified it uh, by heating it too much and reducing it so adding a bit of water will actually create a better a better sauce okay so pan down we'll go through the plating with everything and then you can obviously have a look if you like it if you don't then change it completely and plate it how you like and i mean that because that is the luxury i say every week that is the luxury of these boxes because you can plate it how the hell you want so i'm going to go top and tail just a little bit then and then obviously in the middle and you can see straight away i mean you can see all the juice but look at that look at that juice that is absolutely stunning okay you're not going to get that you're not going to get that at home all right you're probably not going to get it in a beer garden if i'm being honest so just keep just keep purchasing the boxes because that's the only way you're going to get chicken on that do you know what i mean okay so chicken is on beautiful crumble just on top don't be too uh don't be too precise with that you want a bit of crumble on the plate as well and then beautiful ketchup give it a nice stir it's got a beautiful bit of acidity to this as well it's probably my favorite ketchup quite healthy in the portion there as well so I can afford to do a couple either side beautiful right. so it's like a, like a restaurant dish you may as well place it like a restaurant as I said guys it normally doesn't really stick too much because there's so much oil obviously on there so again don't don't worry too much about that I am going to change the plate up a little bit pop that on there like that and then go wow. away. So give it a nice bit of height. And your beautiful barbecued hen of the wood mushrooms on there as well. Finish off with your pak choy. Beautiful. And then it doesn't need this at all, but listen, we got it. So we're gonna use it. White asparagus, straight through the middle. Finish up with a little bit. Of the bat choy, move all this out of the way, keep my spoon for the sauce. The sauce is on. I always say to the chefs, make sure you source the protein. When a plate looks this good, you don't want to spoil it. So we're going to go all around the outside. Perfect. And there we have it, guys. Another little bit of the way. A beautiful main course of poached chicken with your comfy potato terrine, grilled white asparagus, pak choy, teriyaki hen of the wood mushrooms, mushroom ketchup, and your beautiful chicken sauce. Guys, that is literally gonna be lip smacking good. See you after that for a nice, refreshing, yet sweet dessert. Okay, guys, so right, we enjoyed your main course, and we're gonna go on to that refreshing dessert right now, which is we've gone quite individual. So we've got beautiful whipped lemon curd, you've got literally it's up to the brim so you've got a lot more than that this is that was like scraping the barrel so a beautiful whipped lemon curd with fresh Sicilian which is leaf the leaf on lemons this is literally just caramelized white chocolate that's it white chocolate caramelized in the oven chilled then roasted uh, then uh, blended and it just does a deliciously beautiful sweet a caramelized sort of nam night sort of is it caramac yeah caramac sort of flavor delicious uh some beautiful lemon meringue sticks I've also used a little bit of lime zest as well, so some of you might see a bit of a lime zest on there. Listen guys, this is how I pack them. If they do end up being a little bit shorter and a bit smaller to you, you just, just blame the courier. And blame the guys that delivered. I've told them to be so delicate with them, but it, it, it might not go all the way with you. But listen, it doesn't change the taste. They'll taste exactly the same. So you might have smaller ones, but those are the sticks that we that we'd used. And also you'll have beautiful white chocolate and lemon ice cream which is the first time we've, we've tried this here and I thought it was absolutely delicious. Nice little lemon notes at the start and the white chocolate, the richness and the creaminess of the white chocolate comes through at the end. Uh, but I will save that for you guys and I will use a little Rocher from the churned, freshly churned ice cream. So again guys, super simple how to plate this. Plate this is exactly how you would like. I would personally um, put the lemon curl on the bottom because it is the sort of thickest and the richest and equally the, it's got the most viscosity in it as well. So just give that a little stir 
in the, um, in the in the tub as well to sort of let it might be over aerated for instance so just make sure that comes out but it'll be it'll hold beautifully as you can see so it is whipped but it'll hold absolutely beautifully so pop that it's a good portion that is even though, even though it's reduced so put that in the middle and just create a little well in the well stick your ice cream in the well obviously i'll just put a nice spoon of ice cream smack bang in the middle just like that sorry about the phone can't help can't help anyone calling white chocolate over the top just like that and then quite a bit of texture and zing very delicately take out your matchstick meringues just like that and there is your beautiful starter your beautiful starter your beautiful dessert mm -hmm. sorry which i can't wait to get tucked into your beautiful dessert the whipped sicilian lemon curd on the bottom white chocolate and lemon ice cream lemon meringues with your baked white chocolate crumble on the top as well guys that'll be delicious it's a nice texture change and everything in there and then finally as always your beautiful dine at home fudge which to accompany after your meal but again they can keep that in the fridge and that'll last for absolutely ages as well so hope you enjoyed your your video hope it's as simple as i've made it i think i've made it look simple uh, and I hope you really enjoy eating it as well over the weekend, guys. Thank you again for your support. I know I always do thank you, but it's very important to me that I do. So thank you again for, uh, for, your, for your, um, your support in purchasing boxes. Join us, same time, same place next week. The menu is up for the remainder of April and also we've finalised the two weeks of April as well, the two, two first weeks of May today as well. So that'll be going up. So please shout about us. We all still need the support as, as, uh, as the pubs are open. We need the support as well, guys. So if you're eating in, please think about us as an option. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe and dine at home.